Welcome to the Layman Seminary. Uh, this is going to be a different kind of video. Um, what I'm going to be doing in it, and I'm actually going to make a series out of this. You know, uh, Jack Smack has been on YouTube for a very long time. I think I interacted around Google Plus in 2015, and I think he was already, you know, on, uh, involved in ministry and things like that. He was the only free grace voice on social media at that time, if I remember right. Um, I mean, at least on YouTube. Um, I think Renee L Roland might have been the second. But I've never really agreed with their approach and their articulation of things. Um, so, but it got me thinking, you know, there's, there's more that I'm going to say about what's currently going on. But I'm going back 13 years, okay? And I, and what I'm going to be doing in this series is I'm going to slowly but surely evaluate the so-called sermons of Jack Smack, okay? And this is content analysis or whatever you want to have it because this allows me to slowly go through his stuff, make sure that he's heard objectively, and uh, and then, you know, it this isn't a negative thing. I'm just this is to be accurate, all right. Especially since there's confusion out there, and this will give Jack Smack opportunity to clarify himself. Okay. And so I'm going to be objective and I'm gonna go through every single sermon of Jack Smack, all 13 years worth of material. I have uh, AI that um allows me to uh get the transcript and that's what we're working with so that's what we have right here so his first sermon is titled christopher hill is a heretic from hell now whenever you have a title okay it it conveys a certain expectation we could you know sometimes it's clickbait right okay but you got an individual i have no idea who christopher hell is right a heretic, you know, that word's thrown around, but it says from hell. When you talk about from hell, you're saying source. Now, this is a direct statement he's saying. He is from hell. Jack Smack is claiming to have knowledge of this man's source. Now, this has to be spoken of metaphorical in some type of sense, meaning that, okay, he's from hell in that He's an unbeliever, maybe. That's one option. Uh, or maybe he's a sent one, uh, like on a mission. So we could say he's from hell in that sense. We, uh, a heretic from hell. And whenever it's being used as a heretic in this way, typically it's by choice. Uh, and so my assumption is that he's rebellious. He's chosen to be this way these are the type of things that he's saying but what's so interesting about this first sermon he said okay this sermon is entitled christopher hill is straight from hell okay now i'm not saying whether he's going to hell or not i think he is because so here's the basis he's not trusting in christ now, this is the first problem that we've encountered because of Jack Smack, uh sloppy language in his sermons and that his disciples either intentionally or unintentionally, you know, have brought about. Notice that when he says he's not trusting, this is present not trusting. So what this seems to indicate is what happens is people identify oh, you don't believe the right thing right now, and so therefore you're going to hell. The problem with this type of argument is, is that free grace teaches that you can believe the right thing at one moment, right? Believe the gospel one moment, one nanosecond, and you're eternally secure, but then you can fall, call it the false teaching. So it's not accurate to judge people's eternal destiny based on what they're currently teaching. And you notice he says, because I think he's not, he's not trusting in Christ. Now, if he would have been more accurate to say, because he has never trusted in Christ or, or something like that, then things would be a lot more clear. So let's see if Jack Smack clarifies 
his statement as we go. Because he's not trusted in Christ to save him. So he's viewing this guy as an unbeliever. I haven't read this yet. So this is a real time reaction. He's trusting in himself. Okay. Trusting in himself in what way we should ask. And the scripture even says that they're condemned of themselves. Folks, turn to Titus. Let me open in prayer. Did Jesus, I pray this. I need to expose this guy. He's a nightmare. He's all mixed up. He's a heretic and he's trusting in his own work. So we're getting an idea of why Jack Smack is confronting this guy because he's trusting in his own works. So the question is, does he believe in Jesus plus his own works? Is he trusting in one over the other? Let's see. And we need to love him, okay? And we need to pray for him, but we need to pray that he gets the true gospel, all right? Which is undoubtedly does not have, undoubtedly does not have. So does that mean he never received the true gospel? He would never expose to it that he's an unbeliever? How do you undoubtedly know that? How do you have this type of certainty? Uh, Jack Smack, are you charismatic? Do you have a prophetic gift? Can you see into people's souls? Or are you judging them based on their present testimony? And if you are, you're being inconsistent because if you say salvation is one nanosecond, then you have to go back and judge based on past testimony. And the problem with that is that you can't tell whether another person is saved. You have to accept them in faith, meaning, okay, because I only know that I'm saved because I believe the promise of scripture at one time. I can't know whether Jack Smack saved or any of these other people. So to make these arguments about who's not saved and who's going to hell are totally inconsistent with free grace. I'm going to show you, I'm going to expose him right here on this video because I don't think he's that, he's not that big of a problem because nobody knows who he is. But he's got a website entitled The Sin Must Stop, okay, dot org. And he's twisting the word of God out of context and he needs to stop. You know, I, I just pray that you allow me to expose him, let people know what I think about this and straight out of hell, okay? So he thinks about it, that it's straight out of hell. So now we're getting an idea, you know, I'm teaching Bible study methods by doing this, by the way. Now we're getting an idea that when he's saying is a heretic from hell, we see a repeated statement here is straight from hell. And now this is straight out of hell. So in what sense is he still saying this? We need to get clarification. And I pray they'll give me clarity and the verbal, uh, uh, you know, aptitude. And, you know, some of these, uh, trend, uh, what you call it, are not going to be totally correct. I understand that, guys. So just bear with me. Let me clear the drawings because, you know, even let me turn this off. I'm going to go to a highlighting option that might help a little bit better. Um, and 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 lasses and G and asses in Jesus name. Probably I'm right. All right. So there's the end of his prayer. All right. This guy's name is Christopher Hill. He's got a website entitled the sin must stop org. It's pure satanic. It's nothing but twisted scripture out of context. He denies eternal security. Okay. So the, the, the issue is this guy denies eternal security. We see that he denies imputed righteousness. Okay. He denies justification by faith alone. He denies total forgiveness. He denies that all your sins are covered past, present, and future. Guys, this language is suspect nowadays because there's arguments even within free grace. GES, you can see Anthony Rose's, the Rose's argument that it's possible that only future sins, uh, uh, I'm sorry, only confessed sins are forgiven. And it's talking about temporal forgiveness, restoration of fellowship. This affects your view of the atonement that you have. Uh, and other things like that, which when I don't know fully what where Jack Smack lands on that, perhaps this will allow him to clarify his doctrine in those areas. But this argument that sins are covered past, present, future, I think this is uh, I don't think this is a satisfactory answer anymore, because this is what we used to call judicial forgiveness versus parental forgiveness. And then we would say that that Jesus Christ died for sins past, present and future. 
right? Uh, but actually what I think is happening is uh, that Jesus Christ removed the barrier. You know, uh, Jack Smack knows about RB theme. He knows about some of these people that use the same language. He removed the barrier, which means that the 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 removed the barrier for the whole world. Okay, so that means that no one goes to hell because of their sin. They go to hell because they never believed the gospel. Well, once you believe the gospel, some people have described this as judicial forgiveness, the or positional forgiveness. The problem with that. Is it usually those people that were using that term judicial forgiveness and parental forgiveness? They were operating of the Armen a different view of the atonement. And the view of the atonement that they were operating off of, Jesus dies for the world, but only uh, only his death is applied to those who believe. Where this one is is our, uh, operating off of multiple benefits of the atonement, that the barriers are removed for everybody but only those who believe, believe receive Christ's imputed righteousness. So this judicial forgiveness and this past, present, future uh, thing, this may not actually hold up. Another thing to think about, and this is how I've described it in times past, is whenever we're talking about sin, right, if we put it on our chart, let me go to an actual chart. All right, so when we put it on our chart, Three column chart, position, experience, and ultimate. And we talk about in sin. If we're running it through sin, typically the way it's explained is penalty, power, and presence. Okay, but that's still not clear enough because there's other penalties and stuff like that. So another way it's been described as inherit. I'm sorry, imputed. Uh, inherited uh and then indwell in sin okay but there's problems with this because it assumes certain views like not everybody agrees about uh some of these terms so uh, typically though in times past i would say this when you believe the gospel you're you are saved positionally from the penalty of imputed sin that's how I used to say it. But then it makes it sound like, well, then if you don't believe the gospel, you're going to receive a penalty. And then you run into issues about, okay, well, I thought sin was dealt with and all that. So I think the barrier argument of the atonement is a little bit better. And so I don't think Jack Smax thought through the full implications of how his statements relate to other doctrines that free grace has developed. Um, so. The other thing about inherited sin is some people reject. So maybe the idea is better the the uh, power of indwelling sin, and this is the presence of indwelling sin. Okay, so I would like to hear Jack Smack to clarify his his homartology and how it relates to salvation, how he views these categories. Um, let's see here, new share. Okay. Uh, Summer, and he denies Christ. So he's saying that he denies him in some type of way. We'd have to see what type of way. And he denies salvation. Okay. And he denies the Bible. His theology, his gospel is so unintelligible. It's so mixed up that nobody knows when uh, they're saved. Nobody knows when they're actually getting saved. So check this out. He's saying that, that the reason is nobody knows when they're saved. Well, ironically, Jack Smack's presentation, when he makes statements like he's not trusting or he tries to say a person is going to hell because they currently are teaching something wrong, even though they claim to have believed the, the correct gospel at one point in time, this is the same problem. Jack Smack should be consistent and clarify that it takes one nanosecond, and maybe he does. Maybe he gets better over time, uh, that it takes one nanosecond. And so the issue is not what you believe now, it's what you believe then. But see, that. Uh, but Jack Smack wants to point people out to what they believe now because he wants them marked and avoided whether they're believers or not. So this makes him have the tendency to make uh, 
overgeneralized. Uh, he jumps the gun, if you will. So anyway, let's go further. When they had to save, nobody knows when they actually get saved. You know, salvation takes place at a moment in time. You know, scripture says now is the time for now is the day of salvation. I don't I I think this passage is taken out of context. I don't think it's positional, but regardless of that, now is the accepted time. Let me go ahead and give you that verse, prove to you that once you're saved, man is permanent. He totally undermines the doctrine of chastisement. Well, this is one area that I'm in agreement with, uh, Jack Smack, and, and there's not much I differ with him. It's just we need he needs clarification and things. And I'm glad in his response to me, he actually used PowerPoint and visuals because that will help a whole lot for people to clarify them that that are not as good of audio listeners as him. You know, it, it, it he can he can make developments in his presentation, uh, the doctrine just as I can. The doctrine of chastisement. I believe in chastisement, but the thing is, those hypergracers don't, you know, but yet they're flying underneath the flag, flag of free grace. He says he totally insults the blood of Christ, and I'm going to find him where I'm going to find him in one part of the video, in any one of these videos where he just flat out denies Christ. I know it's in there because he's denying everything Christ has done for us. You know, you know, the full covering is sin, the uh, atonement. The propitiation, the expitiation, you know, imputed righteousness. Scripture says clearly he's denying imputed righteousness. But the scripture says we have imputed righteousness, okay? It doesn't matter what he says. It matters what the scripture says, okay? Second Corinthians. Now, if you got somebody got to do it, I'm going to do it. You know, nobody else is exposing this clown because he sounds, he sounds like, you know, you know, I shouldn't call him names. He's calling people and he's calling teachers, uh, <laughs> cow preachers. I, I don't know if this is actually what's going on, if this is actually related to uh, what is being said, but we'll just roll with it. Kyle, he's saying that great glory and all those, some of these really good teachers or preachers are the devil. So it makes me wonder, Jack Smack, is great glory going to hell now? Have you said, oh, he's really lordship? You know, because uh, he's Calvary Chapel. Calvary Chapel doesn't have a clear gospel presentation. So have you ruled on great glory yet? And, and all the some of these really good teachers, preachers are the devil. Okay, so of the devil, what does that mean? Does that mean they're not saved? Does that mean they're underneath his influence? Does that mean they're conscience, emissaries? What's going on there? So let me try to refrain from calling him a name. But this dude, he's a heretic. And that's what the Bible calls him now. Uh be good. I mean, that has got to be, it's got to stop. You know, let me see. It's I, it, What's kind of shocking is the similarities between my first public address in my video of Jack Smack and this one. As far as the passion, the, un, the inexactness in the words, even the language. I've never read this before, but, it, you know, I, Jack Smack and I have a lot in common, I can tell. But going forward. Uh, it's got to stop, you know, let me see what the scripture hang on. All right. Here's what he's guilty of folks. But I fear lest by any means as a serpent begot Eve through the subtlety of your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that's in Christ. Now, what's so interesting about this passage that he's bringing up is the people that Paul is afraid of being corrupted from the simplicity of Christ are already believers. So this, this is a passage showing you that a believer can fall into false teaching. And uh, I think Jack Smack agrees with that. Um, the issue is, is that if once you come against free grace, does Jack Smack view you as saved? That's what I want y'all to be listening to, thinking about, is he accurate enough? Is he Has he been clear? Has his unguarded statements resulted in uh, people misunderstanding him, including myself? You know, the gospel, simple faith alone in Christ, which he denies is easy. It says right there, it's simple. All right. So he brought this passage up because simplicity and he's going with uh, salvation is simple. You know, for if the cometh preach it, another Jesus whom you have not preached, if you receive another spirit, which you have not received or another gospel, which you have not accepted, you might well bear with them. Let me get a drink of water. Okay. Listen, it says right here, there's another Jesus. There's another gospel out there. 
and he's preaching that Jesus does not totally forgive your sins. And he's, I guess, you got to go back to sacrificing, you know, goats and bulls and cows and stuff for sheep, and this guy's nuts, okay? So he's saying, I guess you got to go back to, uh, this is probably an argument to absurdity. I don't think the guy's actually saying you got to go sacrifice those animals. Uh, this guy's nuts. He makes a lot of assertions. This is the, the absolute blasphemous. You know, if anyone's condemned, it's him. You see this, guys? If anyone's condemned, it's him. And the scripture says he's condemned. It never says that this guy is condemned. It talks about people who never believed. It doesn't say, now, if you can make a case that this guy never believed, that's another issue. But let's see actually what's going on here. I'll show you. I don't want him to be condemned. I want him to get saved. I want to trust in Christ for salvation. So he's viewing him as an unbeliever, a true Christ that offers eternal life. I don't even know what he believes. There's no, there's no clue what he's talking about. Well, you got a problem here, sir. You don't even know what he believes. Uh, there's no clue what he's talking about. And assuming that's correct uh, transcription, you're going after him and you don't even know what he believes. You're saying he's he's a, a heretic of Satan because uh, yet you don't know what he believes about it. Like it's hard, hard to refute what he says. Let's see. I don't even know what he believes. There's no... There's no clue what he's even talking about. It's like he's, it's hard. It's hard to refute what he says. Okay, so you're struggling to refute him because it's like he says he teaches. He says, here's what all these preachers teach. And then he starts giving you the truth. And then he's saying, uh, but there's more to it. Ah, so this is what, see what, this is what's going on in Jack Smack's mind. And this, you can see this uh, throughout uh, discussions and everything. Uh, in in evangelism, free grace, uh, uh, all these issues, discipleship. Look what happens. He starts giving you the truth. So he's saying this guy who he thinks is a heretic from hell starts out by giving you truth. But then he says there's more to it. So look what happens here. These people, and, and it's not just Jack Smack. And I think that what's happened is there's been some uh, views uh, within free grace camp. Some proponents of free grace camp have had made statements like this and they were not very accurate. And then Jack Smack took them and made them even less accurate. And then his disciples have made them way inaccurate, you know? So you're for off one degree, uh, you know, like, I'm not a good scientist or rocket scientist or whatever, but you could think about like the space shuttle uh, in, uh, entry. You know, if it's not at the right degree, it's going to burn up. So one degree off now will put you miles away later on, or you get the idea. We'll save the um, illustrations for others right now. But he's giving you the truth. He's saying, but there's more to it. Okay. I've been saying this in my debates. There's a lot of people that go around saying these people are work salvationists. What I actually think is going on is a lot of these people are work sanctificationists. They initially believed the correct gospel at one moment in time, but then they got confused. They stumbled over a passage. They met a false teacher. They struggled with sin, and that threw them off. I'm letting you get an idea of my paradigm and stuff. And so by telling someone that they're not saved, and, and instead of working through the discipleship issue, because what I do is when I encounter someone that's not teaching correctly, I say, did you ever believe the gospel? And, and if they say yes, and I say, well, based on that, you're eternally secure. I'm not here to evangelize you. This is discipleship. If you have any questions or anything I can help you with, we'll go from there. That is my approach. Okay, it clarifies that the salvation is based on one point in time, that nanosecond, and it has eternal results. And it clarifies that the current belief of the person is not the issue as far as determining their eternal destiny. Uh, it just deals with rewards and all of that. Um, so, okay. Starting to give you the truth and he's saying, but there's more to it. But that's not what the Bible says. But he's he's quoting what the preachers teach, you know, eternal security and Peter Wright, just total forgiveness. He's throwing all these words out there. So look at this, guys. Uh, earlier, 
earlier, and like I said, I haven't watched the video that he's critiquing. Earlier, he was saying that this guy was denying all these terms. Look, guys, I'm not making this up. Uh, you know, you know, the uh, he says uh, he flat out denies Christ. I know it's in there because he's denying everything Christ has done. For us, you know, you know, the full covering of sin, the atonement, propitiation, expiation, you know, when Peter righteousness, scripture says clearly he's denying and Peter righteousness. OK, so what's going on is this. Is he saying this guy claims that eternal security is true or at least uh, it, maybe he's a, a conditionalist. I haven't ruled that out yet, but this guy believes and teaches in Peter righteous. He teaches all these things. But because he thinks things need to be added or that it could be lost, uh, Jack Smack is reinterpreting in that to mean he never believed. All right? Uh, righteous. He's throwing all these words out, which are very true. But yet he's against them. Okay? He's not supportive of them. He's against him, you know? That's why I think he's on his way to hell. So do you see what's going on, guys? This is an example of a person who is claiming to have the right gospel and even teaching the right gospel. But when it comes to sanctification or in their teaching to others, Jack Smack sees that and makes an evaluative judgment and thinks that they're going to hell. So he makes this video. This is typical Jack Smack. Do you all see the problem here? Have you all not been blind to this? Y'all have been listening to Jack Smack's videos for all these years. Did he not teach you inductive Bible study methods? Uh, look at these observation sheets. Look what I'm doing. I'm just treating this the way that I treat a text, the way I would treat a legal document, or even a love letter from somebody. My channel emphasizes inductive Bible study. Uh, my undergraduates in psychology and sociology, so content analysis and things like that. I, this is my thing, and I've been doing this since like 2006. So, I do y'all see the problem? Now, Jack Smack has one or two options. He can either just say, I'm going to keep doing things how I want, or I'm going to make clarification. I pray Jack Smack uses this opportunity as I'm going through the videos of his, the transcripts, to make clarification of his doctrine. Maybe one day he can even write a book that clarifies those things. Because the thing is, is that when Charles Ryrie was dealing with dispensationalism, he pointed out that dispensationalists in times past made unguarded statements and it resulted in confusion, uh, like teaching multiple ways of salvation and other things like that. But when you study them in context, you find out what they actually believe. Well, the thing is, is that Jack Smack is theologies all over the place. It's not, uh, I don't think he's aware of all the moving pieces. He's focused on evangelism. And when he sees someone that's not believing the truth, he goes in, throws caution to the wind uh, in his passion and makes these dogmatic statements. And uh, he needs to slow down. He needs to change his approach, be more exegetical, be more inductive, be more visual so that people can follow him and his exact claims. Because he is responsible and held accountable to the people that he has influence over. So Jack Speck needs to rework his stuff. He needs to clarify his positions in these areas. So I'm hoping he does that. So let's see. But yet he's against him, okay? He's not supporting him. He's against him. You know, that's why I think he's on his way to hell. Because the truth is not in him. All right. So you see, he's saying the truth is not in him. So the reason you know someone's on the way to hell is because the truth is not in him. So this is a, a, an allusion to a certain passage of the Bible uh, uh, talking about Satan, if I remember right. Uh, and But you can go to first John and make a comparison. So I'm just saying, I'm not going in detail about it, but how you understand certain passages affect your application in evangelism and discipleship. The Holy Spirit's not in him. So he's assuming that if the truth's not in him, and it's true for Satan, the truth's not in him, and but Satan is an unbeliever, um, and I'm assuming this is the passage about Satan from John 8, 
doesn't uh, the truth does it does not have to be in a believer like he says so that doesn't mean that the holy spirit's not in him just because the truth's not in him when you encountered him because if he believed the gospel one moment in time the truth the capital truth the person truth the of john 14 6 if you will is in him he's indwelling him he said not interpreted scripture he's reading a lot of scripture it's satan interpreted scripture it's the same thing with all these people. They're all the same. They preach. Oh, you're teaching a light and sin. So what's going on is he's come against people that are charging him with antinomianism. And so this is his reaction to it, which is ironic because whenever you study the charges that the Catholic Church made against the Protestants, they said, oh, yeah, now y'all believe in justification by faith. Now your people are going to do whatever you want. And so you know what the response was? Well, if you're really saved, you won't do those things. And so what they did was they threw the people to the dogs and said, oh, that person's not saved. That's the approach that we're seeing right here with Jack Smack. If a person goes against free grace, if he says they're not saved. How can y'all be blind to this? Hopefully you open your eyes. No, I believe in eternal security. I'm not teaching a life sense, okay? You can take that to the bank, okay? I'm telling you that we will sin. It's just inevitable. Yes, the Bible, the Bible teaches the doctrine of original sin. Now you have to twist scripture out of context and make it say that. Uh, well, this is this is a debated topic right here, original sin. Um, let's see. It depends what's being met there. I don't really like the term. But anyway, uh, the scripture out of kindness, make it say that, try to deny that. But I'll give you some scriptures on that if I need to. But let me see where my, uh, where's my, was I going here? Let me jump and hold up, all right? Hang on one second. Here's all right now. Listen to these scriptures very carefully, okay? This is what this, this guy is doing. He speaks like he's babbling, okay? It says right here in Titus 3, listen to me, Titus 3, 9 through 11. Why do I feel like this guy's my enemy? Because he's an enemy to the gospel. He's an enemy to the freeness of salvation. And nobody has any right to say that they're saved by grace and then go ahead and put some law in there. You see what's happening? He's saying he's not saved if he's saying he's saved by grace and then adding the law there. That is what's going on. There, as well as scripture clear, Romans eleven six. 6. You know, if you have the Holy Spirit interpreted scripture for you, you see that what you're preaching, Mr. Christopher Hill, is total heresy. But the Holy Spirit's not interpreting it. It's Satan is listening. And this is here's what he's guilty of now. I want you to pay attention to these last words very carefully. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law for they're profitable and vain. Okay, a man that is an, an inherent after the first a heretic. After the first and second and admonition, reject knowing and knowing that he is such subverted and sinneth being condemned of himself. And that's what he's guilty of. He's condemning himself. He's condemning others and he's condemning himself. He's got on this website all these preachers that he's trying to expose. So ironically, Jack Smack became the exposer guy uh, uh, by going after an exposer guy. And am I doing the same thing? Let's see. Um, so what you're seeing here is, uh, Jack Smack, I think is understanding some scriptures wrongly. This Christopher Hill may teach the law. He brings up a passage about questions, contentions, striving about the law. This passage has a particular context, you know, um, but it says reject the heretic, the first and second admonition. This is talking about within the church. But if this be the case, then that means that to be consistent, shouldn't Jack Smack stop making repeated videos on a particular individual? He just makes them one or twice and goes from there. Does that is that does that come over as a one for one correspondence? If it doesn't, then why would you use it as as your standard by which you do things? I'm just wondering about the application as to the ministry and philosophy of YouTube and all that. Um. But they're assuming that this condemnation is hell. So Jack Smack sees the word condemned and he's committing the illegitimate totality transfer. He assumes that this condemnation means that this guy is going to hell. But no, the word con uh, condemned doesn't necessarily mean to hell. We would look in this passage, but just run it through my chart. It could be prepositional. It could be 
uh, uh, experiential condemnation. All right, so he's condemned himself. He's got his way. All these preachers trying to expose. Some of them are great theologians. So look at this, guys. Jack Smack went to the defense of these great theologians, just as I went to the defense of Charles Ryrie, a great theologian. And then he says, put put to the picture of your preacher here or your pastor here. And he's got like a picture of a whoop. Did Jack Smack get his whole approach from this guy? This guy was putting pictures of wolves and all this here. And maybe that was going on and before then. But it, this is just so ironic. And he's got a picture of a wolf, you know, wearing a sheep's clothing. He's trying to suggest, I guess he thinks he's the only one going to heaven. What, well, Jack Smack, do you think you're the only one going to heaven? Uh, you mean, if as long as they agree with you, they're going to heaven. And, and until they, the issue is with Charles Ryrie, the reason why you haven't said he's going to hell is because as far as you tell, you can't prove that he apostatized, you know, and, and I don't believe Ryrie apostatized, but if had Ryrie uh, rejected free grace and, the, and to, to the degree that we would consider apostasy or whatever, you would be saying he was going to hell, that he was not saved. That's the whole thing. He thinks he's the only one going to hell and maybe 10 other people that actually buy into the garbage and think they can obey the law. And he's totally off. And we're going to listen to him right now. I want you to listen to this garbage. But listen, first of all, let me get you the truth. You know, one clear uh, scripture here before I even give you all this junk, because you have to make sure you have the truth first and, you know, protect you from satanic garbage. You know, we need to pray heavenly, you know, keep as many crosses. Okay, now I know there's a lot of people that do this, but some people would call this poisoning the well. He's given a whole argument, made all these assertions, previewed all of these things so that it will affect how you interpret his video whenever it's played. Whether that's intentional or unintentional, that's the effect that happens. Uh, so anyway. We can every keep as many crosses. You can nearly keep as many Bibles nearly because Satan is behind this website. Okay, this is of the devil. It's straight from hell and it's a flat out mockery. And I'm going to find one clip of him denying Christ. I'm going to do it and make and take all day. I don't care. I'm dedicated to exposing this heretic Christopher Hill on this sin must stop dot org. Listen, I was there for one day. I thought the sin must stop too for one day. I gave that up day because it couldn't stop. You know, no matter what you do, you're going to sin. Bible's clear on that, and I could give you scripture after scripture after scripture about that, okay? All he's doing is twisting everything out of context. That's why you know I got a lot of work, you know, cut out for me because I got to refute every single uh, hermeneutic, uh, every single interpretation of every scripture he uses. I've already found one that's just as laughable error. Talks about obeying the gospel. Obeying the gospel just means putting your faith in Christ. Uh, what is the gospel? Faith alone in Christ. How do you obey? It? By believing in Christ. He makes obeying the gospel, obeying the law, or being some work, or whatever doing some works. It's nonsense. Listen to this, and we're going to expose him right now, okay? So the issue about this is that, that there is obedience for in, related to sanctification, and there is positional obedience where you obey the command to believe the gospel. All right. Here goes. He's got a lot of clips out here on people that are given the true gospel. So you're going to get a little truth out of his website, but then he's going to try, he's going to try to refute it. He's going to look, this is just sad. You really, he's going, okay. It says, here's the sin must stop. It's got this big gigantic stops on here. He's here, he's folks apart from iniquity and turn away from the evil you're doing. It's not accepted because it's not true. You don't have to stop yourself. I'm going to refute him after every sentence he utters here. It goes not accepted for many reasons, but the main reason is because the majority of the church going people and just people who have sat in these churches all these years have brought into the doctrine of original sin. Okay, so he's saying he's against the doctrine of original sin. That's fine. Okay, what does scripture say about original sin? You already read here goes the sound test because I don't have the mic the way I used to have it. Hang out just one second. Here's um, 51 verse 5. He said, did my mother could see me? Sounds like we were born in original sin. Think about that mean. I mean, rotation that up these folks now. He looks original sin before, and I'm not here to look at original sin again. But the reason majority of people can't relate to what we preach and what we teach and what we write about in our boards and such is because the one reason they don't like 
what you teach is because it's a lie of the devil. Okay, back to here. Here's again, folks. Here's a degree or another. They've been under the lie of original sin. It basically lies a doctrine of inability. It reaches that you're born. Okay, so he's kind of going into uh, Calvinism here a little, little bit, maybe. Um, so this passage, I don't think it's a proof text for original sin. I think this is just a statement, as Dr. Ronald Allen says, uh, that relates to David being a bastard child. Um, and basically, Dr. Billy, it teaches that you're born. Is that it? Let me go to it. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is is I can't do all the transcript at once. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to find out where it left off. That's so weird. Why didn't it transfer the whole transcript? Let me speed this up. Let someone get me or something. I know he talks fast, guys, but uh, let's take it to this. Okay, all right. So essentially this is this is uh the first video, okay? But it doesn't stop in his analysis. Well, I have a paper to write, so what I'll do is I'll work on the next one. If Jack Smack wants to make things a lot more helpful, look, I'm liking it. I mean, it's not that bad. Um, I think it has it has bad consequences later on. But if Jack Smack wants to uh be proactive in this then maybe he should go back and maybe he should start doing what i'm doing reevaluating his videos bringing any clarification maybe even uploading shorts or visuals or things like this to help his audience understand exactly what he believes the dispensationalists were willing to do that free grace is willing to do that in certain areas and now Jack Smack needs to bring clarification to his position. That's all I'm asking for. But before we go, just so I can cover my butt, I'm going to go to my channel real quick. Uh, let's see here. How do I get there? Hmm. Uh, was it under? Was it a live video? Let me see. Let's see here. Yeah, the Jack Smack is not free grace video. And you know, uh, I will... Uh, change the title once he makes his full clarification on these issues. Um, and I would say maybe perhaps I'll change it to Jack Smack is not consistent with free grace in these areas. There's nothing wrong with charging somebody with inconsistency. People do that all the time. Um, so this is, I put the transcript down here and it's got some errors, but I want y'all to hear this. All right. Because this is where the confusion is. And, you know, I was passionate and I was tired. And this is not like I have a crafted statement, you know, where I have total accuracy. But watch what happens, guys. Hello, guys. Uh, this this is me, but I'm going to use a different voice. Hello, guys. Yeah, this is going to be a real brief. And I'm here to say that I've been suspecting this for a while, that this Jack Smack is not free grace. The reason I say he's not free grace, because he teaches even though he denies it. So I'm saying he teaches it, even though he denies it, that one must persevere in free grace. So what I'm doing right here is the same thing that he was doing to this guy. This guy was teaching salvation was by faith, but then he added something else. I believe that this is exactly what Jack Smack's doing. He's saying that if you're not pre if you are not presently in correct doctrine, 
then this is this is showing that you're not saved. Even though he makes other inconsistent statements on them. So either Jack Smack needs to stop making rush statements and clarify that. You know, when he started out in the beginning, he said, I don't, I'm not saying he's going to hell, but I think he is. Well, where's that? I mean, there's not even that carefulness in the statements of Jack Smack nowadays. Um, but just keep these things in mind, guys. We can do better. All right. Because he teaches, even though he denies it, that one must persevere in free grace in order to remain saved. And this is very important because the problem with this is that no free grace mainline belief holds this position uh, uh, to these beliefs. So essentially what he's done is he's just adopted perseverance of the saints. He's saying you have to persevere in free grace or you're not saved. He would say every time that someone has apostatized or gone against him or anything like that, he'd say they're not saved. So look, if if I misunderstood him, but this makes you more sensitive to the fact that uh, to, to listen to how Jack Smack deals with apostasy, deals with present rejection uh, and, and all of that, then that's fine. That's great. That's a good thing. Uh, I contributed something to the world, uh, at least on YouTube and stuff, because it allows for Jack Smack to be more clear in his presentation. He could do more of the work of the Lord. All right. Now, look, look what happened here. I divided this up so we could see something. Someone had possibly gone against them or anything like that, and he'll say they're not saved. Now, I don't say right here that he's saying Charles Ryrie's not saved. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the general trend that I've seen through interacting with him on Praise I Am's channel in the chats and calling him. And like I said, I've been suspect of this for a while. Uh, it, he will come up with an excuse to say why the person's not saved. Young Don, other people like that. And he went, and so this is what I say, and he went too far. So this is in addition to this concept. He went too far when he said Charles Ryrie in his most recent video. He says Charles Ryrie is a false free gracer to be marked and avoided. Charles Ryrie is one of the main guys in the very beginning that went against Lordship Salvation. He wasn't the first guy, and I, and I don't, uh, I think I don't agree with him and everything, but I highly respect him, and he's been indirectly influential on in my life. You know, maybe, you know, maybe Jack Smack shouldn't disfigure faces of people that need to be marked and avoided. Maybe he needs to come up with some other motif because that that a motif basically implies that a person is being uh, uh, um, melted. And sometimes he'll have flames where, you know, he thinks they're in hell and other times he'll do that. So maybe Jack Smack needs to change up his approach. And you know what? He can go back and change up all his thumbnails. He doesn't have to continue in this. But you know what? If he does continue in this and he is this sloppy, then I'm going to continue to come after him and all of his minions. You know, this is the opportunity. There's other so-called free grace people, false flagging, flying underneath the flag of free grace that are either hyper grace or they're trying to say if you don't have a right if you don't teach a false gospel, you were never saved. And you know what? I'm going after all of them. So I hope y'all are ready. I hope you're ready to be made famous because I'm challenging every one of you to formal debates. So notice two different things, okay? I'm talking about the general trend of Jack Smack to say people are not saved. And then I talk about he went too far by saying Charles Ryrie's a false free gracer. And then I shift to talking about the trend of hyper grace people and these other people that are saying you're not saved if you teach a false gospel uh, and so on, which I showed you Jack Smack does, uh, even though that may not be his intention. If you're coming out the free grace and you're making these posts, I'm coming out the new. So you want to say you want Charles Ryrie's not saved? Okay, so this you is not referring to Jack Smack. It's referring to these people here because I know it's only a matter of time before it happens. And you know what? If if if, if Jack Smack can prove that Charles Ryrie rejected free grace, he will say he's not saved. That's what I want people to be listening for. 
does Jack Smack say this person needs to be marked and avoided because they haven't rejected free grace? But once they do reject free grace, he says they're not saved. Keep that in mind. And I'm talking about people that once held to free grace and then later rejected it, like young Don and others, supposedly. All right. We have been put on notice. Everybody else is going to know uh, that until you demonstrate by making a video saying I'm not saved or that I'm a heretic or whatever, which will prove my point. I think. All right. So good. Jack Smack has not said I'm not saved. He has not called me a heretic yet. Yet. Sure, he'll find something, which will prove my point. I think you need to explain why is that you do not believe that you must persevere in free grace in order to prove that you're saved. Okay, uh, it's all out there. You know, this has got me so frustrated and that I'm stumbling over my words. So I'm, you know, I'm struggling on my words, just like I said. And usually I'm pretty articulate. And, you know, this is a joke. And I got people lining up in the chat. I hope this goes viral because you've been around for a long time since Google Plus days. And you've been giving free grace a bad name. You've been confusing people about what free grace is. And you created minions. And the thing is, is that when you disrespect Charles Rari, you're doing what Eminem and Royce 59 said. Don't disrespect the caterpillar and the ones that were the pioneers, the ones that brought things up and everything you know. And and so just like they were talking about how they're going to have to eat their own offspring, well, that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to eat your false arguments. And see, and he's dis he's showing disrespect to Ryrie when he disfigured him. All right. You're not really free grace, not because I'm doubting your salvation. See, I'm not going the route that Jack Smack does. But because what the parameters that you're placing on and you're teaching on right now are not reflective of free grace. So you need to answer for it. And that anybody and that's anybody else out there needs to answer for it. Y'all have confused young Don. Y'all have confused Gideon. Y'all have caused real free grace people to be rejected and, and that misrepresented it. I go to a free grace seminary. I interact. I've been in the same room with Bing and Dillo or at least online and live. I've been to conferences. I interacted. I'm not saying I'm the great expert in everything like this, but you know what? You need to stop using the people that don't hold your position as one as one of my favorite teachers, Dr. Dean. Dr. Dean don't believe like you. Dr. Dean doesn't believe that you got to persevere in free grace. Dr. Dean would never say such things. And, and that you're saying right now, and we can go down through the list, now, I'm going to interact with the real chat real quick. I got a lot of work on paper, but I just want to get this out. Hey, Olive, hey, Prime, hey, King Stable. I've taken y'all share. This man is going to uh, uh, light Jack Smack up because they needs to be taken down. Yeah, and Rari didn't uh, go as far as he needs to. I understand that, but I say he's a fake false teacher that marks and voided. So that's what the other person is saying. Only, and so what I say, the only mark that needs to be avoided is Jack Smack. Put him disfiguring people's pictures and everything. He better be lucky that free grace is true. Otherwise, God would be like, man, you know, all those people you disfigured and stuff. Guess what? You're going to hell now. And you're the one going to be disfigured. You're going to be uh, uh, melted. But thank God, God is actually more gracious than Jack Smack is and more gracious than I am. Hey, Ashley. Hey, Josie. Yeah, I got to work on my paper, guys. But I want y'all to share this with other people and anybody else that you find that it's not just trying to say you're not really free grace unless you're this or the less you do that, make them suspect, or as they say in the, in the world, sus in this generation. And let's find out, you know, what? Ask them if they're formally debate me. There's the people that are non-free grace or no challenging me. So let's go with the free gracer. Let's start lining them up. Let's see who's really a free gracer in the sense of not uh, because they're not saved, but because they're not actually reflective of free grace. Let's see. And you know what? If I find, if I find, if I'm found to be hypocritical talking about myself or lack of representative, what? I don't care. I don't care if I lose. I don't care. Uh, I just care that truth gets out there. And what I believe is not getting out there right now is truth. So you know what? I lay it all on the line for truth. Okay, guys, I got to feed my cat and chill out and work on my paper. No, he didn't do a video on me. I'm preemptive, but he went after Charles Rari. So he said, I'll read half of Charles Rari's book. Okay, if you don't understand how Rari was so helpful in things, 
praise wouldn't be free grace if it wasn't for moderating positions. You can't always bring people in the position of Wilkin or even Dillo. You got to step them and let them see those things like that. So, you know, guess what? You go after Charles Rory, you got Charles Jennings. Take that. And guess what? Don't forget about Charles Bean. You know, I'm lining up all the Griffins. You're lining up all the Charles. Well, let's see what happens. Jack Smack, let's see what happens. God bless. This sermon is titled, and y'all come up with the title, God bless. So, yeah, and this bothers me because I want Jack Smack to be more effective. And if he can rein in these youngsters that have followed him, that have taken to his stuff, or even some of the older ones, the people that he's affected over this 13 years, it will it will help free the cause of free grace a whole lot. It will clear up a lot of misrepresentation. It will deal with a lot of strong men. And, you know, I should be working on my paper, but this bothers me, you know, in my spirit. You know, it grieves me. And uh, so hopefully this is a step forward in addressing this. Like I said, if if Jack Smack wants to pre be preemptive, he can go and he could start reevaluating his videos, explaining what he actually believes. Uh, otherwise, I will continue to work my way from Otis to most recent going through his content. And uh, yeah, guys, y'all know how to support the ministry, subscribe, do all that stuff. I'm too tired to give a, a, a proper outro. My stomach's bothering me. Um, God bless, guys.